Okay, well that's a very important type of uh, problem. So once again, you want to put this in your notes and go back and do it again. Um, how many times do you have to do this? You have to do this enough so that you can get through it quickly and confidently. Again, um, it doesn't do us any good to know how to do this if it takes us too much time during the test. So you just have to keep going over this over and over um, until it's easy for you um, to get through this quickly and confidently. What were the parts that gave us um, some trouble here? Well, first of all, um, I don't know if we started by running down the target and the given units. That's always a really good first step. Also, when we found the molecular weights, um, we were retrieving some wrong information from the periodic table. So we've got to notice these subscripts that tell us how many atoms we have in each compound. And then the reason that we're not doing the calculations is because we expect things to cancel as we go on. So we have to look for those opportunities to, uh, to cancel. Now, this was a fair amount of work. Eh, this is a fair amount of work. But if you think about it, with all the cancellations we did, we didn't have to do very difficult calculations. This would still be kind of time consuming, but uh, we have to practice this so we can get through this efficiently. We don't really need to start change end table here because we never got a number in moles because yeah. we went from grams to grams, so the start change end table wouldn't do us much good at this point. Okay. Uh, one thing to point out here is, let's see, silver chloride and calcium chloride. Um, suppose that uh, we used up two moles of calcium chloride. How many moles of silver chloride would that produce? Well, let's make this a better number. Let's call this three moles. If the reaction, so this is, these are new numbers. If we used up three moles of this, how many moles of silver chloride would we produce? Six. Yeah, that's right. Um, that, that should be apparent from looking at the stoichiometric coefficients, but if necessary, we can work that out on paper. Just from the coefficients, we should say, if we use up one mole, we'll produce two moles. So it looks like we're producing twice as much as we use up. Um, but if you wanted to do this in the official way, you would say that we've got three moles of calcium chlorine, and we want to go from moles of calcium chloride to moles of silver chloride, and the stoichiometric coefficients here are one and two. And that's the formal way to see that you need to multiply three by two to get six moles of calcium chloride here. Okay, but with practice, hopefully we can just eyeball this and see, this tells us that we're using, twi uh, we're making twice as much of this as we use up of this. So um, we're going to make twice as many moles of this as we're using up of this. Now I just want to point out, is that, I'm sorry? Uh, so we wouldn't have to take into consideration the uh, silver nitrate then when you're asking a question like that? That's a good point, and the answer is no. Okay. After all, we didn't take the silver nitrate into consideration when we did this question, did we? We just went straight from the silver chlorine to the calcium chloride. Um, it was implied in the problem that there is enough silver nitrate to react with all of this silver chloride. And as long as there's enough to react, it doesn't really matter what's happening to that. Um, how many grams are needed to prepare 72? Well, they simply asked us how many grams of calcium chloride are needed to prepare this, uh, this silver chloride. Well, they, they're assuming there's enough silver nitrate or otherwise we, we could never make this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, this is something we talked about last time. You can convert between any two things in the equation. So um, they could also have asked you how many grams of silver nitrate are required to um, produce 72 grams of silver chloride. Okay. And then we would start um, with 72 grams of silver chloride, but our targets would be grams of silver nitrate. And we would do the problem very much the same way. Or they could ask, if we produce 72 grams of silver chloride, how many grams of calcium nitrate will we produce? And again, it would be the same exact unit conversion. We would start with 72 grams of silver chloride, but now our target units would be grams of calcium nitrate. So it doesn't matter whether you're trying to go from one starting material to another starting material, or from one starting material to the product, or from one product to another, we can always use the same unit conversion. And as you were just pointing out, you can ignore all the other reagents, uh, except for the pair that you're going between, because we always do these problems on the assumption that there's enough of the other reagents for the reaction to, to take place. And that's all that we need to uh, assume. Okay, so that's a good point to bring up. So, um, yeah, um, it's just like, um, suppose I tell you that um, I was making sandwiches and I used four slices, and I used six slices of bread. If you remember the sandwich equation we used last time. Let's say I told you I used six slices of bread to make sandwiches. How many sandwiches did I make? Yeah, three. 
three. That's right. Notice that you didn't have to think about the salami, right? So that's the same type of thing. The salami is like the silver nitrate in this case. We can go straight from the calcium chloride to the silver chloride. I'm just assuming here there was enough salami to go through all the sandwiches. We don't need to think about that separately because it wasn't given in the problem and it wasn't asked about in the problem. All right. Okay. Thank you. So. Uh, Yeah, but I wanted to come back to the basic intuition that these numbers here tell us that um, we're going to be making twice as much calcium chloride as we use up of, I'm sorry, we're going to be making twice as, much, twice as many moles of silver chloride as we're using up of calcium chloride. Now, was that true for the grams? We used up 72 grams of silver chloride. Did we make twice as many grams uh, of calcium chloride? In fact, we made fewer grams. How is it possible that this could be twice, twice as many moles but fewer grams? Well, the explanation, yeah, how is that possible? Did you get that right? Um, uh, calcium, oh, oh I, 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 made, I, I was looking at the wrong thing. Here, silver, we're going here from silver chloride to calcium chloride. Oh, so we're going in the opposite uh, direction. So um, what, what we're saying here is that we're uh, making 72 grams of silver chloride. Mm -hmm. um, so in general, yeah. We would expect that um, if we make a certain amount of silver chloride, we would use half as many moles of calcium chloride. But is, did we use half as many grams here? And the answer is no. 30, um, 27 is not half of 72. Um, so that just reinforces the idea that the coefficients here refer to moles, okay. not grams. That's an important point. The coefficients refer to moles, not grams. That's why we had to convert into moles before we could use the coefficients. Okay. All right.